Hey folks, so today we're going to take a look at Emit. Emit is a device from the Inspired by Nature pack that was built by Dylan Baston. You can download it from your Ableton Live account. Uh, it's under packs. Uh, and so if you just log in, you can download Inspired by Nature. It's available with Live 11 Suite. Uh, I'm going to unfold this tab and drag and drop Emit on a MIDI track. Uh, and then in order to hit the ground running, I need to drag and drop a sample into this instrument. So I'm going to go to the new voice box pack, which is a great source for vocal samples. I'm going to drag and drop uh, so we can hit the ground running. Now, in order to actually hear this, you might think this is a MIDI instrument, right? So Instinct would tell you to hit record, enable, and play your keyboard. We can't do that just yet. In order to actually hear what's happening here, we have to hit the space bar or hit play. And then all of a sudden we hear noise. So let's talk about what emit is. Uh, Ableton describes emit as a visual granular synthesizer. Uh, and that is true. I want you to understand that actually how that's working with this particular device is it's using phase vocoding. This video is not going to get into phase vocoding. If you want to Google it and find out, you can. That's a whole other rabbit hole. Uh, but just understand that that's the way that this is possible. And so basically granular synthesis allows us access to certain tiny grains of sound that we can further manipulate. And so emit allows us to decide which grains we want to hear, how many grains, and how those grains behave. And so the uh, crux of emit here is this little emitter, this little box here. You can see I have my sample here. I can decide where I want to start playback and the, the total length of my uh, playback here of my sample. I'm just going to hit play on my transport so you can hear what's happening. So as soon as I start playback, I have this little grain. Looks like a little ping pong ball. Uh, and that grain is going to originate somewhere in this emitter. So understand the frequency range here is also interesting because the sample we know on a timeline is playing left to right. But if I move this box around now, with the default settings, it's filtered. Right now it's playing the high ranges. If I bring it down low, now it's playing down the frequencies in the lower range of the spectrum. So I've got one little grain and it's, uh, it's pinging out from this box. Now I can add more grains. And then I can, uh, this works in tandem with this parameter called burst. Burst allows you to determine how many particles or little grains are emitted at one time. We can then control the rate of how often those little grains are emitted. Right now it's set to a bar. So if I wanted them to uh, happen faster, I could pull that rate down and now they're coming, uh, coming out at a rate that's bound to a note value or I could make it even longer. Lifetime determines how long they stick around. So if I crank up lifetime, now these particles are gonna stick around as far as, now it's six bars. Now this might be interesting to play with here. Uh, let's look at some other parameters over here. Let's crank up the grains. Let's crank up the force. Again, think of these as like ping pong balls. So the, one of the fascinating things about Dylan's devices is he really thinks about real world physics. So watch what happens if I crank up force. <laughs> it's as if someone had hit the ping pong ball a little bit harder. Now beyond that, we can change the way these particles are behaving when they hit the end of the user interface here. That's over here in this menu. Right now they're bouncing, you can see, off the end of the interface. I can change it to where they wrap around. They'll go travel to the other side, which is cool. And then I can also say delete, which means at the end of the, of the interface, they will just simply disappear. Bounce is the most fun. <laughs> Uh, and then friction. Friction determines uh, real world friction, right? It's going to, once it's emitted, if I crank this up, they're gonna start to slow down and stick. Which is kind of fun. Now remember, we're playing a frequency spectrum, which is really crazy to think about. Uh, and we can actually, with this device, change the way that these particles, the direction they play in even. So check this out, I can change the angle. And this really makes a big difference because it determines whether I'm playing up and down in the frequency spectrum, right? Or linearly, left to right in the sample, which I think is fascinating. I can also make that direction bipolar, so it could go both ways. I can change the width here of how those particles are emitted. So as far as how the grains are behaving, we have tons of fun parameters here. I can also draw a wall. 
So when I click on the wall option, now my mouse allows me to draw a barrier. So now these particles are going to bounce off. Which is pretty fun. Let's turn up the force. Maybe just the overall speed. So let's talk a little bit more about what we're hearing and the kind of the quality of what we're hearing. Now, if you click on grain, by default, the emitter where it's placed is controlling how the sound is filtered. I'm going to click back on my emitter here because I've got mine set to wall. So, for instance, if I place this up top, I'm only going to be hearing grain starting in this higher range of frequencies. If I pull the emitter box down low, I'm going to be hearing lower frequencies in the lower range. Now that's by default, but I can change that under grain. If I flip this y-axis button, understand when we say y-axis, what we're talking about over here is basically the, the, the position of the box, right? The, the emitter here. That's controlling, by default, what, frequency, what frequencies we're hearing. It's, it's controlling the filtering, but we can change that by turning this to pan. What this allows us now to do is now the box no longer controls the section of frequencies that are being filtered, it controls the panning. So grains admitted towards the top of the box are going to feel like they're on the right side. Grains on the bottom will be panned left. And if you look at the hints over here, it's backwards the way they explain it, but I tested this. And I feel like it's the opposite. I feel like grains that start at the top are actually on my right side. Grains at the bottom are on my left. Now, if you're wondering, well, now how do I control the filtering? If the position of the box no longer controls the filtering, now that's here. So now we can control the cutoff frequency, the Q, and other things related to our filter here. Notice we have a, another emitter, so we could get two going at the same time. So here's my first one, and here's my second one. So maybe I want this one to have a ton of grains. Maybe I want to have it play in a certain direction. Maybe I want this one to play. That's cool. Up and down in the frequency spectrum. Now I also have a, a, a couple of other options here under grain. I can kind of put a little bit of a fade at the beginning of those grains. And I also have a couple of really crazy parameters called glide and blur. And this has to deal specifically with how the phase vo vocoding is working. Uh, Dylan uh, even says, I believe on his website, that you can, you can kind of Google to find out a little bit more about these, but it has to do with the frames uh, and how they behave. But you can get some really wild results. Some kind of metallic shimmers there. Very cool. Let's check out the modulation tab. Modulation tab gives us a couple of LFOs. So we can choose our LFO shape. Again, if you're not familiar with LFOs, basically we're taking the shape of something, something and the shape is going to determine how another parameter behaves. And what happens depends on how we have it routed. So right now, uh, it's going to do nothing, even if I switch like the sync button, which by the way, I can change this to a free running LFO to sync uh, to the same rates that I saw over in my emitters. It's not gonna do anything until I go to routing. I have to assign this LFO to something. So uh, right now I'm gonna turn off emitter two. What if we go to routing? What if we uh, had LFO one modulate the pitch of emitter one? And then the amount of that modulation is here. So again, it's not gonna do anything until I crank up this amount. Then I can go back and fine tune my LFO. Maybe I want the rate to be faster. Uh, we also have a couple of envelopes here that we can adjust, and then from here, under routing, we can determine what those envelopes are going to modulate here with our destinations. So notice I do have a, a button here that says MIDI. And so when I click on MIDI, uh, and I record enable my track, now I can play this as a MIDI instrument. And by default, it has, uh, when I click on that, MIDI note pitch is selected. So where I play on the keyboard now 
will change the pitch. So if you wanted to play this as a MIDI instrument, you certainly could do that. All right, so let's say I have something I like and I want to record this. Understand this is a MIDI instrument. So what I would suggest uh, is to just simply use an audio track to capture uh, the audio from this MIDI instrument. So I can do this here in the I.O. Uh, in the mixer. I can tab over if I'm a linear person. I just need to see it differently. I could certainly do that over here. I'm just going to have on an audio track here, I'm going to select the input as the emit track on that first chooser. Uh, then I'm simply going to record enable that track. Uh, and then I can just hit record and play and record the audio signal of my emit track. Maybe I want to even manipulate this in real time, which of course will capture it as automation. But I'm printing all this audio in real time. So let me know what you think about this device, how you're using it, what you've discovered. I certainly didn't hit every single parameter on here, uh, but I encourage you to uh, just experiment, throw a crazy sample in and see what happens and let me know how it goes.